Welcome back to Cube. I'm Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and here is Google Apps updates roundup number 30 and in this video I'm going to show you all the new changes I spotted in Google Apps in the first two weeks of August. So without further ado let's jump in. I will start with Google Photos and the first change is under memories. Now when you open anyone and then tap the three dots at the bottom right corner or swipe up you will get a card similar to the one we get when we swipe up on any photo. From here you can jump right away to the photos of that day, you can tap on hide and in this case it will give you two options either to hide date from all memories or hide certain people and pets. You can also add the currently showing photo to any album by tapping on add to album. Here also you have the date and time, the people, the location of the photo, the file name, the phone that took the photo and finally you will get the memory settings which will take you to the same memories settings page we used to have in the previous version. This new approach will give you more information about the photos in your memories, plus it matches the same design of the info pane in the normal photos, which makes it more consistent. One more thing worth mentioning here, when you open any memory other than recent highlights and then tap on add to album, in this case it will give you two options, either to add all items in this memory to an album or only add this item. So I'm not sure why the recent highlights is the only memory that when you tap on add to album, it will only give you the option to add one photo. The second change is the new memories widget and Google finally started to roll out the feature more widely and that's why when you tap and hold on the photos icon, now we have the widgets shortcut. When you tap on it, you will only get one widget which is your memories and its default size is 2 by 2 So let me add it to a new page to show you how it works. Once you add the widget to your home screen, it will ask you which Google account would you like to link it to. So I'm going to choose my personal one and then wait for a few seconds and you will start to see your memories popping out on the screen right away. The smallest size you can get is this one which is 2 by 2 you cannot go any smaller but you still can make it a lot bigger if you want to and as you see here every time I change the size the image will adjust accordingly to fill the entire space and I can go as big as the entire screen. The widget will pick random photos either from your memories or your gallery. So for example, in this case, it picked up a photo and that's why you can see the date of this photo right here at the bottom. And when you tap on it, it will take you right away to Google Photos showing you the same image you have on your home screen. And once you go back to your home screen, the image will change with another one. So let me show you another example uh, when it picks up a photo from the memory. And here's what happens when it picks a photo from your memories. In this case, you won't see the date in the center. However, you will see the name of the memory at the bottom left corner. And when you tap on it, it will start playing the memory for you so you can go through the rest of the images. And the third change is under people and pets. Now when you tap on view all, you will be presented with one consolidated wizard that includes all the required confirmations for the people in your gallery. From here, you can do it for more than one person without the need to go inside each and every one. And the last change is in the advanced search filters. Let's say you are looking for specific photos using the search. Once you get the filters at the top and then tap on more, you will get a redesigned card with a smaller thumbnails, font, and the far more options to choose from. Now let's move on to YouTube. And it got a couple of new playback gestures. The first one will allow you to jump between chapters by double tapping on the screen using two fingers. So let me show you how it works. Now I jump to the next chapter and by doing this I can jump to the previous one. You will also notice the name of the chapter will be written on the screen briefly and then it will go away. The second gesture is the ability to scrub through the video by tapping and holding on the screen and it will give you this animation explaining to you how it works. When you start dragging your finger you will be able to seek forward and backward. Those two gestures will work in portrait mode and landscape mode as well. The second change in YouTube is in the captions when the video starts to play automatically on your home screen. On the right I have my Pixel 4a which got the new change. My Pixel 5 is running the same YouTube version but I didn't see this new feature. If you take a look closely here you will see on my Pixel 5 the captions are using a light grey color and they are always in a rectangular shape. On my Pixel 5 the background color is black and it's wrapping around the text. In contrast, when you tap on the video to play it normally, the captions look exactly the same. Next, 
YouTube music. And I only have one change here. In one of my videos, I showed you when you search for something, you will get the results from YouTube music and your own library. But now Google expanded the search to include your downloads. And if you have any songs uploaded, you will get a fourth one called uploads, which will make your search much more useful. Now let's talk about Gboard and it got plenty of new changes. The first one, when you type any word, it will always appear in the first spot of your suggestions strip and it will have an underline. It wasn't clear to me why this new feature exists, but after using it for a while, I found that if you have the autocorrect feature turned on, but you still want to use your own words, you can do this by tapping your word in the suggestion strip. And by this, the keyboard will ignore any autocorrection and keep the word as it is. Also, if you have the autocorrect feature turned on, now Gboard will tell you which word it's going to use once you hit the spacebar. So in this case, the word those is highlighted. Once I hit the spacebar, as you see here, this is the word of choice. And this feature will let you know beforehand which word Gboard is going to use based on the autocorrect feature. So you can either go with it or choose a different one. Next, now you can resize the floating keyboard using these four handles, but it works in reverse. So for example, if you want to make it bigger, you need to drag your finger inwards and vice versa. Next, when you go to the emojis keyboard and start scrolling, the navigation bar at the bottom will disappear to give you more space. And once you stop for a few seconds, it will show back again. This new behavior applies to all the tabs you have at the bottom. And if you are using Android 12 and they have the dynamic theme selected under settings, you will get this redesigned number pad that matches your device theme. And also the buttons are now more rounded to match Android 12 design language. Now let's talk about the settings page of Gboard and it got some changes. The first one is the initial support of Material U and that's why you see this highlight at the top and you can see it in each and every page. It doesn't work 100% yet, but this will give us a hint about how it will look in the future. The second change is the new menu item, which is called emojis, stickers, and GIFs. This one will include each and every setting related to those three features. And instead of having them separated under different categories like preferences and text correction. So now you have everything related in one place, which is a better approach. And finally, as you may know, when you copy text, Gboard will automatically look for the important information like phone numbers, emails, and addresses. And then it will give you separate suggestions to paste these parts only and ignore anything else. But what's new now is the ability to turn off this feature under settings. All you need to do is to go to settings and then clipboard and the second toggle here called show items such as addresses, phone numbers within recently copied text. Once you turn off the feature, this behavior will stop. Now let's talk about Google phone app and contacts. Starting with the contacts app, now it supports material U, and that's why the search bar at the top is matching my device theme. Same as the side menu. You will also see the floating button here at the bottom right corner. And when you try to add a new contact, everything is matching my device theme now. Other than this, it works exactly the same, no difference. And you will see the same change when you try to add a contact using the phone app. So for example, when I tap on create a new contact, as you see here, I'm getting the same design because it's an extension for the contacts app. Talking about the phone app, if you are using Android 12 and they have an ongoing call, you will see a chip here at the top left corner next to the clock and instead of the floating bubble like before. So let me show you how it works. So now I have an ongoing call and once I go to the home screen, as you see here, the chip started to appear with the counter. And when you tap on it, it will take you back to the call screen. And when you pull down your notification shade, you will see this permanent notification with the ability to hang up, mute or turn on the speaker. One more thing worth mentioning here, after connecting my Bluetooth headphones, now the option to change the audio source disappeared, but I used to be able to do this using the bubble, so I'm not sure if it's a bug in Android 12 or this is how it should work in the future. The last thing to talk about in the phone app is the core recording. Google started to roll out the feature more widely to Pixel devices and I have it here on my Pixel 5. However, this feature doesn't work in each and every country. I used to have it up and running in Egypt, but once I came back to the UAE, the feature stopped working. And to confirm this, when I go to settings, I have the option core recording, but when I go inside, it says core recording isn't available in your location. The only thing it allows me to do here is to choose when to delete the recordings and to choose between those four options. 
other than this it doesn't work so to give you an idea about the feature i'm gonna leave a link in the description for an article from 9 to 5 google that talks about the core recording and how it works using some screenshots and the screen recordings next wear os and google started to roll out material u for google play store and i have it here on my fossil gen 3 smartwatch so let me show you how it looks so now everything is using a bell shaped design as you see here all the items in the list are using the same design also the buttons when you go inside things like for example my apps you see the update all button is now bigger and it has the same design and let's go inside one of the apps to see how it looks same the open and uninstall buttons are now bigger than before and this is how it looks on Wear OS now. Now let's talk about some various changes in different apps and I will start with Google Keep. Now when you try to set a reminder in any of your notes and choose to pick the time yourself, you will see a redesigned time picker that matches Android 12 Material U. And this is the only place where I found this redesigned time picker. Next, Google Duo. And it got a redesigned home screen. And instead of having the old split design that shows your camera viewfinder at the top and then your contact list at the bottom, now all you get is one page with the history of your calls and one button here called the new call. When you tap on it, it will populate your contact list. From here, you can create a group by choosing up to 31 people and also search for the contact you want. Other than this, it works exactly the same. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Google Apps in the first two weeks of August. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.